All right, so our last uh, section for this week is 5.6. Okay, 5.6 is a good review of everything we've done because it's going to cover everything we've done in 2D again, and we're going to make extensions to all those formulas um, for 3D. All right, so this is what uh, a 3D coordinate system looks like. Um, we don't do any of the drawing we did in 2D in 3D. Okay, it's just too difficult to really sketch uh, by hand in 3D. Okay, but the way 3D works is you're going to add in another axis called the z-axis. So basically before, you were down in, in this area. That's the xy plane. Okay, think of it as like the bottom of this graph. Okay, when we start coming up off the xy plane, or you could think of it as out off the board, that's your z-axis. Okay, so the z-axis is what makes it 3D. Any question on, on that? Right, and there's actually a pretty um, easy way to figure out which way your um, which way your z-axis points. Okay, in your book, I think it shows it. Um, so yeah, they say it right at the bottom of um, page 354. Right, they say the direction chosen for the positive direction of the z-axis makes the system what we call right-handed. Okay, right-handed. It says, if you point your index finger in the direction of the x-axis, your middle finger in the direction of the y, your thumb will point in the direction of the z. All right? So it's hard to do it on here, but if x was towards you and you know, y was towards the door, z would be straight up. Right? So it tells you, gives you a way to just figure out which way your axes point. All right? So any questions on that? Right, so again, this one's kind of hard to show, but you know, x is kind of <coughs> x is think of that as like 3D. Y is coming at me. Z is going straight up. Right? So there's there's your axes. If you do it too long, you're gonna get a hand cramp. So. X? I can't do that again. That hurts my hand. Yeah. No. So x x is your middle finger, um, index finger. Y is middle finger. Thumb is Z. X, Y, Z. Just write it on in the pen. You know, so X goes tattoo like it. You remember. X, Y, Z. No matter which way you do it. X, Y, Z. Okay. All right. So in 2D, okay, this is how we found distance between two points. Okay, it's basically um, a formula I think we did. This was the very first day of class. And it's the Pythagorean theorem. Find the difference in the x's squared plus the difference in the y squared. Add them up. Take the square root. Well, in 3D, we pretty much use the same exact formula. We just need to add one thing onto the end. What do you think I'm going to add onto the end of this to make it 2D into 3D? A z, z2 minus z1, z2 minus z1 squared. squared. Yep. OK, so in, in 3D, now we don't just have an x value and a y value for coordinate. We have an x value, a y value, and a z value in that order. Okay, it's alphabetical order, x, y, z. OK, and the distance between them is difference in the x squared plus the difference in the y squared plus the distance in the z squared. You add all those things up and then take the square root. Okay, and this is called a coordinate. Okay, just like in 2D, you can call it a coordinate. Um, in 2D, we call them ordered pairs. These are called ordered triples. Triple because there's three things. All right, so let's find the distance between um, those two points. Okay, so P1 is negative 1, 3, 2. And P2 is 4, negative 2, 5. Okay, everything we do today, as I just said, it's all going to be um, formulas. We're not going to be sketching this in 3D. Okay, that's pretty challenging, so we'll, we'll stick with just doing arithmetic and formulas. Okay, 
Does everybody have what's above the formula? Um, so, Zach, what are the f first two things I'm going to subtract? X1 and X2. Yep, we're going to go yeah, X2 or minus or X1. Yeah. yeah. So, what's X2? 4. 4. X1? Negative 1. Yep. Be careful. You're subtracting a negative, so we'll deal with that in a second. <coughs> Plus, um, Nathan? Next two things I'm going to subtract? Negative 2 minus 3. Negative 2 minus 3. <coughs> and Alex, last two things I'm going to subtract? 5 minus 2. 5 minus 2. Right. So now just do that out and see, um, see what we get. Wait, uh, Callie, what's 4 minus negative 1? Yep, that's 5 and we square it. You're going to get 25. Um, Becky, what's negative 2 minus 3? Uh, five. Negative 5, and we square it. 25, get 25 again. Okay, and Brandon, 5 minus 2? Uh, 3. Squared? 9. Nine. Okay, that's the distance between those two points. Okay, if they want it as a decimal, just use your calculator. It's about 7.68 uh, units. Bless you. All right, so any question on finding the distance between two points in 3D? All right. Okay, so now we're going to look at not just coordinates in 3D, but now we'll do vectors in 3D. Okay, so in 2D, this is one way we could write a vector. This is unit vector notation. We have a horizontal component. That's our x. And we had the vertical component. That was our y. i and j were unit vectors. Okay, to do this in 3D, we're going to need one more <coughs> unit vector. Okay, we had i, we had j. What do you think my third one's going to be? K. Okay. Right. So this is what a, a vector would look like in 3D. Right. So you, as an example, you could have 2i plus 3j minus 4k. Right. That's the 3D component. Okay. One way to think about what we've been doing all week up to this point is pretending like the k component was always 0. In 2D, you don't have a third thing. It's just 0k. Okay. Now the 3D component is not 0. And we can also write it the other way that we learned with the angle brackets. Okay. So these are the same vector, unit vector notation, and then with the angle brackets. <laughs> Okay, just like in 2D, A, B, and C are the com components of the vector. The X component, Y component, and Z component. <coughs> okay, this you've already gotten your notes from Monday. Okay, if you have a vector that has its initial point at the origin, that's called a position vector. And it's the same thing in 3D. So you already, again, you already have that in your notes. I'm just saying it also applies in 3D. Okay, and in 2D, okay, you've got this in your notes. This is how we found a position vector. We did x2 minus x1 comma y2 minus y1. Where p1 is the initial point. That's where your vector starts. P2 is the terminal point. Okay, that's where it stopped. Okay, what do you think um, we're going to add on to the end of this for, to make it 3D? Z. Yeah, we're going to add a Z2 minus Z1.
Okay, so now our initial point and our terminal point are three-dimensional. They have an x, y, and z component. To get the position vector, we'll subtract the x's, subtract the y's, subtract the z's. The way I've written it here, this is angle bracket notation. If we wanted, we could do i, j's, and k's as well. Yeah, you've got everything in your notes. That's all from Monday. Okay, so that you should have. This, this is new. So this one, they're going to give us uh, two points. Okay. If they don't tell you which one is the um, initial and the terminal, the 1, P1, is always the initial. The 2, P2, that's the terminal. Okay. And that makes a difference because subtraction is not commutative. You cannot switch the order here and get the same answer. Wouldn't those be the parent keys instead of the or, oh no, because they give you the, got it, give you the points and you find the vector. Yes. Yep. So we're going we're gonna to find the vector. All right. So we'll just set it up and uh, see what we get. Okay, so Allison, what's the um, first two things I'm going to subtract here? Um, four and one. Yep. Four, uh, careful, four and? Negative one. Negative one. It is going to become a plus one in a minute, but we'll deal with that. Next thing is six minus two. Okay, and page, uh, my last component. Two minus three. Two minus three. Right, so Derek, uh, what's four minus negative one? Uh, five. five. And then six minus two? Four. Four. And 2 minus 3. Negative 1. Negative 1. Okay, so there's a position vector for those two points. Okay, now if they wanted it um, with i, j, and k, um, John, can you just write it that way for me? 5i plus 48 minus k. Minus k. So any question on finding a position vector in 3D? Um, on the test, they could ask for it either way. Okay, some of the questions will be multiple choice. So if, if you get this answer with the angle brackets, just know that it's the same as this. Any other questions on this? Okay. All right. So we went through all the formulas in 2D for how we add vectors, how we subtract them, how we multiply them. Okay. We're going to do the same thing here. All right. So V and W just represent two vectors. Each vector has an X, Y, and Z component. If you want to add vectors together in 2D. We added the x's, we added the y's. Well, now in 3D, you also add the z's. If you want to subtract vectors, okay, I just didn't write it as a separate one. I just put plus or minus. If you want to subtract, subtract the x's, subtract the y's, and now also subtract the z's. If you want to scale a vector, okay, that's where you put a number in front of it, like 2v or negative 4v, okay, whatever number you want. And it's like you're distributing that number out to each component. Well, now there's three components. So multiply your scalar to the x, multiply your scalar to the y component, and multiply it to the z. Okay, and the last formula is um, finding the length of a vector, finding a magnitude in 3D. Well, 
we kind of already did that. If you've got an initial point and a terminal point, okay, between your vector, you could use the formula I just showed you, okay, the first example, okay, which is basically the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, in 2D, this was our formula. Square root of x1 squared plus y1 squared. What do I have to add onto the end of this to make it 3D? Plus z1 squared. Okay, and that's how you find the length of a vector in 3D. So again, if you missed any formulas during the week, this, we're pretty much hitting them all right now. So this is, this is good to have. I wouldn't even, if I was making a reference sheet, I wouldn't put separate formulas for 2D and 3D. They're the same formulas, except in 2D, just ignore the Zs all the time. Okay? Are you making two separate? Okay. Yeah, I'm just using this as my reference sheet, the notes that I take tonight. Yeah, yep, yeah, that's good. Okay. So in 2D, just pretend like the Z's are gone in every formula, and you can use the same ones. All right, so let's, um, let's start by finding um, V plus W. Okay, this is the only way we're going to add. We're not doing it visually. You could if you had like a computer and you could visualize it, but um, it's kind of hard to sketch these 3D by hand. Can I what? Yeah, there's a website I can go on and graph these, and you can kind of look at your thing, and then you can turn it and look at it from any angle. Yep, I'll, I'll try to find that after. Um, I can't graph 3D on here. <coughs> Otherwise, I could just show you on that. But, yeah. All right, so to add these up, just combine all your like terms. Think of them that way. Combine the I's, J's, and K's. All right, so Jake, um, can you tell me what that would, what vector V plus W would be? It would be 2i plus j minus 2k plus 3i minus 4k plus 5k. All right, can you do that first part again? What do you get when you add up your i's? 5i. Yeah, sorry, I didn't mean that. 5i, and your j's you had? J, and that last one? 3K. 3K. 5I minus J plus 3K. Okay. Part B, um, they just want us to find the magnitude of V. Uh, ben, anytime I want to find the magnitude, what, what symbol should I write down so I don't forget? Square root. Yeah, put the square root right away. And now fill in everything under it. Chris, do you think you can remember um, what we do to find the magnitude of V? It's going to be 2 squared. Yep, 2 squared. 3 squared. 3 squared. Plus negative 2 squared. That's it. So now just do that out, and that's, that's the magnitude of V. So we're going to get... 4 plus 9 plus 4. Okay, um, so Charlie, what does that add up to? Yep, so we get the square root of 17. Any questions on how to change square root 17 to a decimal? Mm -hmm. If they ask for that. Okay. And the last one, um, this is scaling the vector. John, when you put a 3 in front of a vector, if I, if I were to draw it, how would 3w compare to w? So it would be 3 times as long with the direction change? No. So this vector points exactly the same way. It's just triple the length. All right, so just take each component and triple it. 9i. Okay, minus 12j. Plus 15k. 
questions on how I found 3W? Okay, so all I, all I did was distribute a 3 to each, num each number there. So dot product, okay? If you can do a dot product in 2D, um, I shouldn't even have to show you anything. You should pretty much be able to figure it out in 3D. It's exactly the same, same idea. Okay, in 2D, we multiplied the Xs, we multiplied the Ys, and we added them up. Okay, what, what do you think the extra step is in 3D? Multiply the Zs and then add those on. Just multiply the Zs and add that onto everything else. Yep. So it's the product of my x components, my y components, and my z components. Do each product individually, and then add them all up. Does everybody have the V and W part? Yeah. All right, so um, take a second on your own. See if you can find V dot W. Okay, what I'm going to do is see if I can find the um, program online where I can graph those. And um, I'll graph those while you're finding that dot product. All right, so let's take a look at our um, dot product. Uh, so, Paige, what are the um, first two things you multiply? Two, one, and five, one. Two, two and five. Yep. Two and five. Okay, uh, next two things, Andy? Uh, negative three and three. Negative three and three. Uh, and Jess, do you think you know what the last two things are? Uh, six and negative one. Good. Six and negative one. So my dot product is ten minus nine minus six. Okay, 10 minus 9 gives me 1, and 1 minus 6, negative 5. Okay, so there's my dot product. Okay, any questions on the dot product? All right, so what I did while you guys were doing that is I um, graphed these two vectors in 3D, okay, so we can see what, um, what they look like. And uh, the 2, negative 3, 6, that's the blue one. 5, 3, negative 1, that's the red one. Okay, so you can see this is my x, y plane. And there, the blue one is definitely coming way up off it. Okay, I can kind of rotate it around and, and see it in 3D. See, see how they look. Yeah, if you were to look at it flat, that's what it would look like if you drew it on paper. Okay. Flat. Okay. That doesn't look very 3D. And then if you could even look at it like right from the top, now it almost looks like the vectors are lined right up. Okay. And what I can do is automatically show the resultant vector, which basically, let's say the red was wind and the blue was the plane. That purple one is the direction it would actually go in. So that finds it automatically, takes the two and combines them. Uh, Right, so there, there's a good view. You can see that one in purple, it's a combination of the blue and red. It's adding them together visually. Okay. So any questions on that? Right, again, sketching in 3D, not, um, not something we're going to do. Okay. Um, last thing we are going to look at in 3D is finding the angle. Well, finding the angle in 3D, it's exactly the same as 2D. Okay, you know how to find the dot product in 3D. You know how to find a length in 3D, and you use the same formula. Okay, the only difference is 
That's a 3D cross product. That's a 3D magnitude and another 3D magnitude. And we've done all of those individually. Now we'll just put it together. Hey, you know what, I, I think I'm gonna use the same vectors I did in the last problem because I already have the cross product. So that's the first step. <coughs> Two negative three six. I'm just checking. Two negative three six five three negative. <coughs> yep, those are the same vectors as example four. Okay, so what? Um, actually, I can show you visually what what we're going to be finding. Just get rid of that. We're finding the angle between the blue and the red vector. Okay, in three D. It, depending on how you look at it, you can almost make it look like that angle is not even there. But that's just the perspective you're looking at it from. Okay. So you can kind of see that one dips down. Okay, so let's find that angle. Okay, what's, um, what's our dot product? We already have that. Negative 5. Okay, length of view. Okay, what's, um, what's 2 squared? Four, negative three squared, nine, nine and six squared, thirty-six. 36. What's um, four plus nine plus thirty-six? Forty-nine. So the length of that vector is seven units. Okay, they don't all come out nice. This one just happened to. And magnitude of V. Okay, uh, Dakota, what's uh, 5 squared? 25. 25. Uh, Chris, 3 squared? Plus uh, Nick, negative 1 squared? 1. Okay, so we get the square to 35. All right, and the last part, Nathan, can you set up my... Um, equation that actually finds that angle for me? It would be uh, cosine theta equals negative 5 over 7 times square root of 35. 7 times what? Square root of 30. 35. Good. Okay. And lastly, to get cosine uh, theta by itself, we're going to get rid of cosine with same thing we did before. Inverse cosine. All right, so our angles, press second, cosine, negative 5 divided by, I'm going to put this in parentheses, 7 square root 35. Close parentheses for my denominator. Close it for my inverse cosine function. Right, so the angle between these vectors, uh, it's almost perpendicular, not quite. 96.9 degrees. It's just an extra part when you're finding the dot product, an extra part when you find the lengths. Okay, any, um, any questions on um, finding that angle? Okay, so if you missed any days during the week, this pretty much would make it so you could probably answer all but one question on the test. Okay, with just what we've done today. This reviewed pretty much everything. Okay, except the word problem, which I'm not reviewing a word problem today. <coughs> All right, so last topic I'm going to look at. We're not actually going to do an example with it. It's just something I want you to know that it exists. Maybe I'll ask you the name of it. Maybe I'll just ask you some kind of bonus question about it. Okay, so I said that there is another way to multiply two vectors. Okay, and that's called a cross product. 
what's the name of the other product we learned? Dot product. Okay. I will test you on dot product. Okay, you def definitely need to know that. Okay, we didn't study cross product yesterday because cross product only works in 3D. You cannot do a cross product in 2D. Doesn't work. Okay, this website, I think it actually, it can show me the cross product automatically between two vectors. Okay, and there's different applications to physics and geometry. Uh, Again, we're not going to be getting into those applications. But basically what the cross product does is if you give it two vectors, okay, it'll find a third one that's perpendicular to both of the originals. Okay? That's what a cross product does. So if you have two vectors, it'll find a third one perpendicular to both of the originals. Okay, so if I try to show this just right, I don't know, can you tell that the blue and the green are perpendicular? Yeah. See how they form a right angle? And the red and the green, I'd have to show it from the right perspective. But can you see how the red and the green kind of look like a 90? It's hard, it's hard for me to get it exact. But the point is, this one in green is perpendicular to both in red. That's what the cross product does. And that's, that's all I'm going to say about cross product. Okay, so any questions on, on that? Okay. All right, um, so the homework is on 363. This is a good, good review for the test. Okay. 15, 17, 29 to 35 odd, 41, 43, and 51. Okay, I will be after school for extra help today, okay, if anybody needs extra help.